Hello there, Ray here, and in today's video, I will be showing you guys this cool little farm which allows you to get the rarest axolotl that is in 1.17. Axolotls are a new mob in 1.17, and there is five different variations of color that you can find them in. You can find them in the white, the brown, the pink, as well as the yellow, but very, 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 very rarely will you ever find one that is blue. Getting this rare type is so extremely difficult, the chance of getting it is 1 in 1,200. So getting this blue and gold one is the biggest achievement possible in survival for 1.17. That means on average you'd have to come across over 1,200 axolotls in order to find one of these. And if you thought that was tough to get in 1.17.1, they are changing it so that you can only get these super rare ones from breeding up two axolotls, making it over 100 times more difficult to get than it currently is. Before we continue, make sure you guys are subscribed, and if you enjoyed learning about rare things in Minecraft, check out these other two playlists of mine after this video. Now there's three ways that you can find these axolotls. One is just by finding them that naturally spawn in inside of some water under the ground. As requirements for these guys to spawn in is at least two blocks of water, has to be an area that is completely void of any light, and there has to be a stone type at least five blocks underneath of the water that they spawned in. Now it doesn't just have to be normal stone. Tis Awesome looked into the Minecraft code and this includes granite, diorite, andesite, tough block, as well as deep slate. And it can be naturally generated or placed in by the player. The last requirement for these guys to spawn is that it has to be under the sea level with blocks above it. This is why you typically don't find them in oceans. Now the second way that you can get axolotls to spawn is by removing all other mobs that have the similar mob cap as the axolotl. Now they recently changed it so axolotls and glow squid are no longer under the same mob cap as mob creatures which is the group that dolphins and normal squids are in. But now they are under this new group which is for the underground creatures and is represented as a U here in the F3 screen. This includes axolotls and glow squid. So if I summon in a glow squid you'll see that this number beside the U will change to a 1, 2, and 3. And then as they die the mob cap gets freed up once again. Now if I summon in a axolotl, you see they also appears underneath of this U. But you can remove them from this mob cap without actually killing them. And this can be done by just picking them up with a bucket of water. And then soon as you place them down again, they will no longer count to the mob cap. You can see the U still shows a zero. This is because they have a special tag that shows they came out of a bucket and therefore won't hold up the mob cap because they're kind of considered like a pet. Now another way you can prevent them from holding up the mob cap is by name taking them. Now you see it went from 1 to 0 once again. And another way you can stop them from being in a mob cap is to have them as a passenger. So if they are riding something, they no longer will count. Now the third way that you can get the rare axolotl is by breeding two axolotls together to produce a baby. There is that slim chance of 1 in 1200 for their baby to be the super rare one. So if I go ahead and give a bucket of tropical fish to one of them and then I go to the other side and give another one to this guy, they have the heart modes and then they will produce a baby. There, there's a baby. But this method is extremely costly as you have to get tropical fish from catching the fish with a bucket of water or by purchasing them from a wandering trader, making it very tedious and manual. And you would need 2,400 tropical fish in a bucket on average to get one of the super rare babies. Now the reason why this axolotl is going to be so much harder to get in the future is because out of the three methods that you can find them in your world, finding them naturally spawned, getting them to spawn into your farm, or breeding them, they have removed two of them so you won't be able to naturally find them and you won't be able to get them to spawn into your farm. But the only way they will have it so that these guys can be obtained in survival is by breeding two of these guys together. And for this reason, it is really important to obtain it before updating to 1.17.1. And that's exactly why I designed this farm, because this farm will no longer work once they come out with the full release of 1.17.1. And then you'll be stuck having to try to breed over a thousand different times in order to hope to try to get one of these. Now the current code for how this rare axolotl comes into the game is a bit messed up, but will probably be straightened out by the time 1.17.1 comes out. So that is why I designed this specific farm to get the rare one very easily. Now you might recognize this farm as my simple squid farm using axolotls for 1.17. And this farm also works for glow squid. And there's links to both those farms in the description. And what I changed about the farm is that I put in a collection system in the center 
So any Exilaws that spawn in will be attracted towards this cod in a minecart as they want to come over here and kill it. But instead they will get trapped inside of these bubble columns here and then they will still try to make their way towards the cod. And as it is in the center right here, they will try to get as close as possible. But they can't swim against the bubble columns. So they end up moving upwards from the bubble columns and then they slowly move to the side and eventually to the center. So let's spectate Axolotl. You see, he sees a fish, he tries to get to it, he ends up getting stuck in his bubble column. He pulls him all the way up, way up into the air where the player is AFKing. And he seems to like to spin in the bubble column while he's at it. And when he gets to the top, he will get stuck up here. So the bubble columns go straight into this area right here. And this is where we have some scaffolding. Once they are in there, they are right in front of the player who's going to be AFK in this minecart. And he has a bucket of water in his hand. And when you right click, you're going to scoop up one of the axolotls. And then if you happen to click on the scaffolding and you right click again, what the game does is it doesn't place the axolotl and the water right back in the same location. It places the water there, but it places the axolotl on top of the waterlogged block. So they don't end up here, but instead end up on top of the scaffolding, which is where all these axolotls are running about. So here I have a waterloggable block in the center. You guys can easily see this happening. If I right click it, the water goes into the block, but the axolotl is put directly on top of it. This way we can sort away the water from the axolotl very easily. Now besides splitting the water and axolotls with this method, it does a second thing, which is we've just scooped up an axolotl in a bucket and then placed it down again, meaning that it no longer counts to the mob cap because it went through a bucket and is kind of considered like a pet. For this reason, every single axolotl that we have up here is actually not hurting new spawns from occurring down inside of our farm. And there is a lot of these guys here. We have over 100 of them. That is actually a small amount compared to how many you would have to gather in order to find the rare blue and gold one. Now to run the farm is actually pretty simple. We just got a minecart here. The player will hop into it and you of course would be in survival mode. Then you want to aim between the slabs on top and the walls down below right in this gap here. Kind of aim a little bit lower because you can get some babies to come through. And baby axolotls are very small so you have to click kind of low to get them to be able to scoop them up. Then you just want to push sideways to start the minecart going back and forth and you want to aim fairly straight ahead. Then you just want to hold down the right mouse button and you can see the player is automatically placing the water down inside of the scaffolding and removing it every once in a while. And then when the axolotls come up you will pick up the water and then once they come in front of your face you'll be able to pick them up inside of the bucket. Right there, I picked one up and I also placed it down. I picked up another one, placed it down. As soon as you place them down, they end up in the block above. And we have some trap doors here to prevent the ones down below from going through the scaffolding completely. This keeps them separated. The ones on top can't go through the top of the scaffolding and the ones underneath can't go through the trap doors. And then once they're up here, they no longer count to the mob cap and you can make this area nice and big. So that every once in a while, you can come over here and kind of look down through them. And then see if you see any of these kind of bluish purple gold ones inside of there. Now they will build up over time and they will take entity cramming. So it's best to clear them all out before doing a long AFK session. Now while you are AFKing this, you might notice some like desync of the water. It might end up looking like there's two pieces of water sources. Or it might look like the water is completely gone, not in your bucket and not in front of you. But don't worry about this, it's just player desync. And I did make a bug report for this. It can cause some weird things to occur, like axolotls actually looking like they're invisible. So the farm doesn't seem like it's working. Make sure to re-log because sometimes there's axolotls in there, but the game doesn't render them because client side, they're no longer there, but they're only showing up on server side. You can see I just re-logged and there is actually two axolotls in there that were invisible to me. So hopefully they fixed this bug. I mostly noticed this in single player. But the desyncing can also cause the water source to duplicate. And here's a clip from my stream of showing that the water duplicated from one source into two of them. Is there anything we can do to kind of like slow down? Like they're, they're bobbing a lot. Wait, where's the water now? <laughs> we just dupe the water again. Water dupe guys, we just duped the water. So keep this in mind when running the farm. Now the entire build is pretty simple to build up. I actually did a tutorial on this bottom part for the basic squid farm. And the only difference I did was to put in tinted glass here to make it dark inside so we can get axolotls and glow squid. You can use any block type that will prevent light from coming through. 
In the center here, I just put a divider with some more blocks and I have a little opening right here where I have a cod in a minecart. And the way you can get it in a minecart is just by putting rails like this as it's a curve, putting a minecart right there, and then just placing in the bucket of cod right here on the minecart. And then the minecart will move and it will instantly pick up the cod. And then you just have to drop it down into that spot right there. The cod itself is sitting on top of a chest. This is just to lower it down so it's less likely for the axolotls to zip right on through and attack it. If you do have problems with your cod dying, just put in more layers of bubble columns around here so that the axolotls will be pulled upwards before they can even get remotely close to the fish. I did put some slabs on either side just to try to give a little bit bigger area for the axolotls to see the targeted mob. But this back panel of blocks is important, otherwise they have so much momentum they'll zip right on through and they won't really get funneled into our trap. Now above this what I have is just a three wide opening that's all bubble columns. At the very top of our wall we have some more soul sand. And with these three soul sand any axolotl that tries to get to the cod will end up in the center here and then they won't be able to fight the, the bubble elevator which will take them all the way up to the player. Now the main reason why we have the player AFKing up way up here in the air is the same reason why my fish farms have the AFK spots up in the air. This way you can prevent any other mobs that are in the same mob cap from spawning in places that you don't want them to. You want them to only spawn inside your farm. And because the mobs spawn in a big sphere around the player, only the very very bottom of this big bubble is where that farm is located. Meaning that everything else is air and these guys can't spawn in air. So they're forced to spawn down in there making it very easy to control them and eventually catch them. If you end up AFKing down there you'd most likely be loading caves below it. And that's why these farms are just underneath of sea level to make them super easy to build and they don't have to worry about spawn proofing any of the area around it. So unlike the squid farm which has to be built inside of a river biome, this can actually be built in any biome. But I would recommend building it somewhere where there's no water around the edges of it. And that way you don't have to worry about spawn proofing it. Now one extra thing you can do to try to speed up the chances of getting axolotls is actually putting in your own axolotls. This is because axolotls and glow squid are both in the same mob cap. So what these guys are supposed to do is they're supposed to kind of swim around and attack any nearby glow squid so that they will kill them and that will increase the mob cap once again so that more axolotls can spawn in. Now I had to put these guys on leads which I put over here because otherwise they would get attracted to this cod and end up getting pulled into the system. But naturally spawned in axolotls will also help kill any glow squid that happen to spawn in. Now one problem with the glow squid, unlike the axolotls, they can actually resist the bubble columns. So there's no really easy way to get them out of the system. But these guys are optional, you don't have to put them in the farm. Now this new mob cap for underground creatures can have the same amount of mobs as the water creature one, which is 5. Now 5 isn't a lot and because of this reason the farm itself is kind of slow because they have to spawn in then they have to get pulled to the center and you have to pick them up and place them back down again. So that's why I made an AFK farm for this so that you can just run this overnight while you're sleeping and you can have a whole bunch of axolotls to check in the morning. Now getting these super rare ones is a big flex. Now the cool thing is once you get one of these rare ones you can actually get more of them just by breeding it with any other axolotl. So if I go ahead and breed this one with this one, there is a 50% chance that it will choose this type or it will choose this type. So this time we actually got one of the rare ones, could also got a yellow one, but this way you can get unlimited amounts of these rare ones. And you can also end up breeding two of the blue ones together, which case you always get a rare blue one. This means you can sell all the extra ones that you have to other people on your server. You could probably charge a lot for one of these as it's such a huge flex to get one of these rare ones. Just remember to store them in water otherwise they will eventually die if they stay on land too long. Now during my stream while I was building this up we did have a rare blue axolotl spawn. So we're gonna have... Oh okay. Oh my goodness guys! We got one of the rare ones! Right? Yeah, I've got the rare one! <gasps> that is so crazy! That's naturally spawned in rare one! And after the stream, while I was testing this farm some more, I had a second one spawn in. So the farm definitely works in getting these special ones. Now one of the bigger projects on my YouTube channel is actually to create a farm for every single item in the game of Minecraft. And I have this Google Sheet which has all the items on the left hand side, some information in the center explaining how you can get this item, 
And on the right hand side is a video showing a farm that will let you get it. And most importantly, this lets me organize it so I can see exactly which items I have left to farm. And currently we're almost at 90% of designing a farm for every item. And as I design more specific farms for unique items such as like the bucket of axolotl, I can come in here and place in a link. And the current link goes to my old manual axolotl farm. I'll replace it with this new video where you can automatically get bucket of axolotls. If you'd like to check out this document and see the progress that I'm currently at, I'll have a link down below. If you're ever looking for a specific farm, like, hey, how do I get detector rails? Then it'll, then it'll show you the easiest way to get those in large amounts. It does include item specific dupes like rail duper, but doesn't include any general item dupes. And it's actually pretty surprising how many things you can obtain through farms. Now, while we were talking here, you probably wonder what is this boat with these two chickens inside of it is for. Now, this is actually to prevent the axolotls from escaping the holding area, which is right in here. We turn on hitboxes by doing F3 plus B. You can see exactly how big these guys are. And once they end up in this area here, they will kind of just walk back and forth. Now, the little guys are very small and they could actually slip between even the area underneath of a slab. And because of this, I'm using this trick where I have a wall and a slab, meaning that the wall itself actually stand half a block taller than what it appears to be. So the wall actually puts any entity that's on top of it all the way up here. But the slab that's above it also comes down half a block. So there's technically no area between this wall and this slab for any mob to slip through. But it still allows me to click with my water bucket in this area without clicking on any blocks behind it. Because I don't want to end up placing water in anything back there. Now this works great except for when we put in scaffolding, it needs to have a supportive block to stand on top of. Because of this, we can't just have scaffolding sitting right there floating, but instead have to have it go all the way back to a supporting block, which is over here. And since the scaffolding is over here, it means that there's no slab in this area where over here we have a slab. That means they can actually hop over top of this wall and hop out of this area. To prevent this, I use a boat, which I pushed up against the hole. So you can see they're trying to actually go through the hole, but the boat is an entity that has a collision, meaning that you can collide with it. So you can actually like stand on top of it. And for that reason, they can't actually go through the hole. To prevent other axles from hopping inside the boat, I just placed in some chickens ahead of time and then pushed it in using a piston. And thanks to N99 who had this great idea with the one-way scaffolding. It makes it so much easier to grab the axolotls off of it. Now when I was designing this farm, I also tried to keep in mind that any blocks that are above the spawning locations will slow down the rates of the spawns. So I don't want to have any blocks up above these areas where the axolotls will spawn in. That's why I try to keep this area as small as possible because every little block that hangs over can slow down the spawns by a little bit. So this big area where we're holding all the axolotls is actually hanging over top of nothing over here so it's not affecting the farm. Now while you are AFKing this overnight you do have to be worried about phantoms spawning in so make sure your guy is completely secured so you don't die for them. Now as always if you'd like to see exactly how I designed this from scratch I did it all live on my Twitch stream and you can find the archives of those streams over there. I thank everybody who joins my Twitch streams you can catch me live every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. A very simple farm that lets you get the biggest flex in 1.17 to impress all your friends with and potentially make a lot of money. If you'd like to check out this farm in more detail, we'll provide the world download in the description. And as always, if you enjoyed this type of out of the box thinking, be sure to go ahead and leave a like on the video as well as share it with others and let them know that they should collect this rare mob before updating. I would like to thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!